and now you're seeing the hit. The hit is down for Chris Perez, and it's Carlos. So nice. And what's going through Carlos' mind is probably like, "What's going on here? I cannot go to two. Hopefully, that's going through his mind because if he's at two, he's gonna have an unpleasant surprise coming at him in the form <laughs> of hit lightning fast hit. Lightning fast hit. Oh my God! When it, he's like. He came to me, he's like, I'm playing lightning fast hit. And I just had to smile. Snap I was key. like, I haven't seen lightning fast hit since set one. But he's playing four of them. So let's hope. Because he's also playing, like uh, like we said, he's playing the, the vanilla two drop hit. And he's playing the promo three drop hit. So I'm super excited. Since it's not Mecha Frieza, if he goes down to two, unsuspecting. Well, I mean, now he's probably not unsuspecting because he did play the two drop hit. But you gotta be terrified to hit if you don't know what that card does because uh, you're newer to the game. The card burns you for two life. Yes. It burns you for two life when you evolve. So, oh my god, I can't wait. <laughs> I can't wait. I'm so excited. Because Hit was one of my favorite cards coming into set, like, in set one. I hit is a it. great card. I mean, it didn't see a lot of play because there was so much mecha or bloodlust around, and it was just easy to stop. But here, it might be the finishing blow, especially if Carlos doesn't see it coming. Like, like we said, we're in set three. It's very easy to, for people to forget about sleepers from set one because when it hit it was never a huge impact it was never a deck that we really gave a lot of respect or consideration to so it's something that you know you don't see coming and for our buddy carlos here we just hope that he knows exactly the plan that chris is brewing because it's going to be so much easier to attack this matchup once you know what exactly you're doing so you got a pan leader you're drawing a bunch of cards you have a little combo in the form of the hit and you have inherent draws on Kaba and Rushing Warrior Pan, so you do have a good amount of ways to just see the hit combo. Before it was just like, you know, Red didn't have too much draw power. You didn't have a really reliant way to get cards. And you were just relying on your opponent hitting you, awakening you, you drawing cards, and then seeing the combo. And now it's just like, all right, we, we have a few things to work with now. Let's see if this becomes a little bit more impactful than it was in the past. To note, currently, Carlos does have the new Android 17 on the board, which A, has critical, and B, uh, has an activate main effect once per turn. Uh, it's one green, pay one green. During that turn, if an opponent's battle card with an energy cost of three or less has been placed in the drop area from any area by one of your skills, choose up to one of your Android 18 with an energy cost of three or less and play it. So if he does do a crit damage, which he does, and the card's no longer on the board, but if he did a crit damage, it's gonna start being a little shenanigans. Yeah, he did hit with that crit, putting Chris down to four, so it might be a little bit deadly here. Pan's gonna be able to flip, Ooh. draw two cards, and you're gonna see another hit. Hit the board. Hit the board. <laughs> hit the board. God, I love this deck. I like I'm super excited about this deck because like I said, hit was one of my favorite mechanics in the one. And I played the crap out of that card. Now, Carlos is in kind of a tight spot here. He's facing down two Kabas, which are tapped. Easy. There are easy targets for Carlos to attack into, but then you also have two hits on Chris's board. So the plan and play here might be a little bit confusing. Do you go after the tapped hit and then go after the other one some other way? Or do you just say, hey, you got it, man. You can have two hits on board. That's fine. I just want to get rid of those Kabas because those Kabas could spell really big trouble for Carlos. Well, you also have to remember uh, on your opponent's turn, that promo hit is invincible. It can't oh, be really? killed. It can't be killed. So that's very important to note. He has to not swing with that. So if he goes, uh, if Carlos does go into the cell chain, which we know he runs the cell chain because we have his deck list. Uh, if he goes into the cell chain, he can't kill that hit if he chooses to, to activate the effect at the beginning of his opponent's turn. So, you know, it, it sets it up. It sets up the, the, the light fast play. And since it's not a bloodlust deck, can't let it go down to, can't let it go down to two. So he's attacking with Dr. Jero into the Cabo, which is a fantastic play. Uh, Dr. Jero at exactly the same power as Cabo, so it's an easy kill. And then it looks like he's choosing to go after the Cabas, which is an excellent decision. You don't want to give Chris that inherent card advantage and threat all in one card, which Cabo provides. So a uh, huge hit here. And Chris coming out here and untapping onto his turn four. We're going to see what spice he can throw down on the board. But he does have a flipped leader. <laughs> And he still has things to do. He has more energy. And Carlos is at five. So he's unawake. I mean, he is awakened, but he's out of super combo range. And it looks right there. Carlos does have a 10K in hand. He has the new 10K. The, what's it called? The Stout Hearted Android 16. Android 16, yes. And that one just, instead of drawing you, makes your opponent discard a card. Is that? 
one second. I'm, I'm more looking at, uh, he did just combo with the combination attack 14 to kill the, uh, the other hit. But the super combo we're going to put up real quick, if I can find it. By the way, guys, we are using dbsdex.com to, uh, to to pull cards that newer cards that we aren't one hundred percent sure on. It's so little. It's so much more fluent than the actual DBS card game database. You can actually search by leader. It'll give you every leader and every color, and then it'll give you every card and every set by converted mana cost. Or you can actually search by other filters on site. But the default is by mana cost. So if you know the mana cost, it's usually the easiest way to look it up. So that Android 16 does say, uh, when you combo with this card, if your leader card is green, Android... Ooh, did he just combo with that? Because if he comboed with that 16, he's at five life. <laughs> no, he didn't combo with it. He, he just has it in his hand. Okay. He just has it in so his hand. he has it in his hand. Uh, choose one card from your opponent's hand, place in the drop area, and this card gains plus 10. So it takes away the draw power, but gives you the disruption on the opponent's hand. And it looks like Chris... Play another starter deck exclusive from the Cross World set, and this is uh, Chain Attack Trunks, I believe, and it's gonna summon out a Gohan for free. 15k, 15k, bring out the Gohan, and uh, Gohan again has the opportunity to either draw a card or give itself double strike. Uh, in this situation, he's probably gonna. I would say it's probably better to just go for double strike because the cell threat is a thing. He does run cell. Uh, Chris might not think he runs cell because I don't think we've seen any of them yet, but. Uh, it is a, a potential threat in his deck. Chain Attack Trunks is so powerful. It's a card that has a permanent uh, that it could attack cards in active mode. So that's already huge. It's got 20k attack, which is very respectable. And Big. then it's also got an auto ability when you play the card to choose up to one battle card from your hand with a power of 1500 or less and play it. So it gives you a lot of mana efficiency. It essentially became a one drop here because it brought out a three drop Gohan. And that Gohan, easily one of the most strongest cards uh, in the game. I mean, it gives an inherent uh, threat or an inherent card advantage in an all-in-one card. So, uh, fantastic card. And Chris really seeing the power of it here. And it looks like Carlos is going to go at his opponent's life with that critical android and mm -hmm. combo with the combination attack. And that's going to kill the Gohan. That card is so good. We're going to see a lot of play from that combo. I mean, it's almost like a... It is like a Sun Gohan almost in its own way, but for Android specifically, and it's an Android, so you could actually search it, no? Yep, That's yep, insane. it is an Android, so Jiro can search it, which is a little terrifying. That's I mean, <laughs> you know, Gotenk can be searched by Mighty Mask, but that's, you know, there's a little synergy issue there because a lot of decks play that Gotenk, exactly. or that Goten, but... Now this fits, it feels like it fits together so much better. I feel like the Androids really got the missing pieces that they needed to become a fluent mono green deck. And I think that's huge for the deck. Instead of it having to rely on the red package with Mighty Mask and uh, Goten and Trunks, now you have something where it could be a lot more deadly. We're gonna see exactly how much more deadly here as Carlos is trying to make this work. And it looks like it is working. Chris at three, Carlos going down to, what is that, three now? Yeah, Carlos going down to three now. So he can actually, all of his, all of his superpowers, I mean, super, super combos, powers? super power super combos, powers? super powers in the form of combos Whoa. are now active, and his androids are all bigger now. His uh, and 18s. That's terrifying. So now, he, now he's got two drop 17 and 18s with critical, with abilities to summon themselves for one energy, Oof. which I don't know if he's going to actually use, but that's it's a ridiculous there. calm just be like bring one out bring one out bring one out yeah oh oh Ooh. snap he's playing the uh That's new card 13 yeah android 13 the uh i actually saw that movie recently that was uh you just watched cool. that movie yeah i just watched that movie actually i didn't i didn't even know that that was a thing i was just like where'd these guys come from oh it's a movie uh so he played dawn of terror android 13 and its effect is actually a really interesting one choose up to one of each android 14 and 15 from your drop area and place them under the card, then choose an Android 13 with an energy cost of 7 from your deck and play it on top of this card, then shuffle your deck, and then it has an auto. When you play this card, your opponent chooses one of their battle cards and KO. So, that KO card, <laughs> Union of Orb, go into shenanigans, start burning your opponent. Oh, God. Like, we thought that hand destruction was the thing before with Broly. We didn't know. Yeah. We didn't now, know real hand destruction, because now I'm going to pop your cards and I'm going to make you discard. And that Android 13 is a big one. That is uh, the kill card, and it is... It does look like Carlos is playing it, and it's the Unending Destruction Android 13, super rare from the new set. And if that drops, it's going to be pretty deadly because not only does it have 30,000 attack, but it has double strike 
and an auto when you play this card your opponent chooses one of their battle cards and KOs it so you get two KOs one off the dawn of terror and one off the the under android 17 that you bring out and then when one of your opponent's battle cards is placed in the drop area from any area from one of your skills so you can do it off the combo uh one of the com the super combo that makes your opponent drop one your opponent chooses one card from the hand and places it in the drop area speak of the so, devil himself he appears and boom. goes ahead and he absorbs a 14 to 15 from his drop area into it to go into the big boy to kill to pitch a card oh man now that God, card is combo. extremely powerful and you're gonna see it do a lot of damage here 30k so it's funny because Carlos is actually utilizing two types of Union Absorbs in here, and they're both 30k double strikers. What are his numbers on those? Is everything four? Wow. Wow, really everything is. It's just everything searches everything, and everything Union Absorbs into everything. So it's just kind of like, I'm just going to start throwing big things on the board <laughs> and make it just discard, 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 pop, 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 and you're just, what do you do? What do you do, that Machado? Is, I don't know so, what to do. so frustrating if you're on the other side of that. Uh, if Carlos, man, that card <laughs> is just so much pressure. You're staring down a big beat stick too, and that's the problem. Chris is playing another copy of that chain attack trunks to summon a Gohan, but none of these things answer that massive monster on board. Chain attack into Gohan, drawing off a of pan, okay. his pan leader. He's going to draw again, maybe off of the Gohan, uh, or he can go on another different line and he can actually just attack. But Carlos, he's attacking with the leader, so he's going to draw. He's going to try to hit Carlos. Carlos is not going to let that go through. But if he would have, then he would have gone, be able to go in with the Miraculous Comeback Gohan, go into Double Strike, and threaten Lethal. But Carlos knowing a little better than that and defending that against that attack. So Carlos has, uh, Chris has another line of play here where he could attack with the Chain Attack Trunks, which he's going to do now. Correct line of play. And maybe dump a 5, hit 25, make Carlos dedicate multiple cards. Can and you see the future? Is not what's happening right now? No, no, no. This is Can just you? the right line of play. And I'm glad that Chris is taking this. Chris is a local player here. He has a lot of practice playing against these heavy hitters. So you see a lot of that experience coming in here now. Uh, Car uh, Carlos, unfortunately, has the 10K pump here. And a 5. Yeah, and two, two 10Ks. So there goes Chris. And Time to cycle, right? Eh? <laughs> just drop cards, because dropping oh, cards God. is fun. Yep. And now Chris is going to go in there and draw a card, because that's all he can do. And Carlos just in a commanding position here with a 30k double striker. Still a few cards in hand. Pitches an Android 7, 18, no, 17, which 17. he didn't even have to. He could have just somebody made it a 20k beater and just threatened Chris's life to no existence, you know. But <laughs> threatened this man's life to no existence. But, Can I help you? <laughs> I, I don't know. Carlos here is attacking with Android 13. I'm not 100% sure if that is correct on that part. What did Chris respond with? Oh, he just took two? Weef. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, Carlos should have attacked with one first, given his opponent one, and then went for lethal on the Android 13. Like, that was just so much better of a line of play. What would you give Chris two cards? You know, off yeah, the bat. That's so that was thing. definitely something that he could have done a little bit better there. But as you can see, it didn't matter. Like, that Android 13 put in so much work. Just it was make just it dump, just dumping cards left it, and right. It was just ridiculous. So at that point, it didn't really matter that Android 13 had done its job. It's taken like five, six cards from his opponent, and it was just like Chris had nothing. He had nothing. Imagine if he did the cell combo into that. Oh jeez. Or if he had Android 13 on the board and then cell combo. By hand. That is a combo. Bye. That is a combo. So I like having no cards. Do you like having no cards? Because I like having no cards apparently. That Dawn of Terror Android 13 showing that it is not a card to be taken lightly that is uh when i first saw it i really liked the card and i just saw it in action and it just completely blew me away i mean it's something that gets online very easily because all you have to do is have the worst android which i think is android 13 i think that's a no wait no android 15 15 15 15 makes you discard 15 makes you discard but i think you need to play it yeah you need to play android 15 and i think that one's the worst out of the android like 14 you have the combo one so that one's a little bit better because you get some value out of it it kills something android 15 you have to cast on three so normally you're just pitching it to the graveyard for a combo that's the one that's the weaker one so it's, that's the only reason why i was like eh, like to play that dawn of terror to resolve it you really need to have both and one is not a problem 14 fantastic combination attack you can search it the other one you just got to have it and 
so throw it to the yard. And if you throw it to the yard, and throw you're it like, to the okay, yard? boom. What's the yard? Throw it to the yard. Graveyard. Sorry, oh, I come from what's a Yu-Gi-Oh background. Graveyard. The drop zone. I only know what a drop zone is in this game. Uh, yeah, Just yeah, like, yeah. I don't know what mana is. What's uh, mana? mana? I only know energy. Uh, it's, uh, I come from different card game backgrounds, and we use those terms. And a lot of people do, and I like it. I, I like that... Mm, this game, call this something else. Obviously, you gotta call this something. Yeah, else. you can't just. You're gonna call, call it what you're used to. If they could use mana, they would use it as mana. But you know, it's something that's interesting. It fits into the theme very well that they called it energy, of course. But uh, it's Should've great how it key. works exactly like. Should have been key. It's key great. Would have been great because that's what they call it in the show. It's key. It's not energy. Oh, well, yeah, I mean, lend me your energy. Yeah, yeah. They say key. Yeah. Regardless of the fact, I think that, that that Android deck showed up. And that's the problem. Once you get enough energy to fire it off, oh, does it go off? It's just like Broly. When you when you have the energy to go into the big Broly's, what do you do? You do nothing. Yeah. You hope so you have blood. This was a little bit better because it does have a four drop in Android uh, in the Dreadful Do. Um, no, not Dreadful Do. Dawn of Terror Android 13. Only four energy, and you can just cast it. You don't even have to have the pieces. I mean, like if you do have the pieces, great. You can go into your uh, Voltron, which you did. Your and Voltron? That's, your, that's <laughs> Voltron. That's your that's your Megatron or Voltron or whatever you want to call it. But that's your game ender, and that is something that is huge. And you want to make sure that you are going into that guy because you just want to abuse that ability. That ability is just so good, and you want to make sure that you're casting it. And that's what he did. Uh, now in the sideboard, he has speedy surprise attack. Which is a negate. He's got Iron Hammer of Justice Android 16, which is really good too. It's a good blocker. I don't know if it goes in against this deck, but it seems like it might because Panic's so reliant on battle cards. It's not really a, a leader type deck, so that might be seeing its play in there. But other than that, you got Made to Destroy Android 19. Is that the uh? It's the new one. It's that guy, right? No, that's so the like one. the other form of it. Yeah, yeah, it, okay. it's it's yeah. Yeah, I think it kills like a. Energy cost of two or less, but I'm not sure if that would go in there. So we'll show you guys. We're looking down, but we have the iPad up right now with dbsx.com. Uh, be sure you do check them out because honestly, this has been a great resource for us today, especially since all the new cards are out. And, uh, you know, it's kind of hard to keep up with them. Yeah, it's no, kind of hard to keep up with it's, all the brand It's stuff. really good because it gives you everything from set one, two, and three, all by color coded and mana conversion. So and you can also just. Made to destroy number. 19, switch this card to rest mode, choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards with an energy cost two or less than KO that card by Kaba. By Khalifa. Very good card. So um, something that could go in the sideboard against those decks 100%. That's a great point. Um, does Kaba decrease the the cost of the cards in on hand. the field as well? In hand. Just in hand? Yeah. Okay. Um, now for Chris's side deck, he's got four uh, Restless Destruction Mira, four Assassination Plot. I love that card. That card uh, two Unending Awakening. Two Vados Assistant and three Haru Haru Attacker Majin. That's a very good card, and we're gonna see if it plays into this match. We're going into game two now. Game two. Of round three. Of round three. Three. And uh, we're almost halfway there, guys. So living on fantastic. Rare? Yeah, almost there. Halfway Whoa. there. But fantastic time. Everything's been going smoothly out there. Judges have been doing a great job. And now we have a game two of round three, and we're gonna see exactly what adaptations Carlos, I mean Chris, can do in this matchup. I don't know if this is a very favorable matchup for him. It looks like, I mean, like, he has no resistance to what Carlos does. So, if Carlos goes and assembles this, it's just something that it's just going to go in on Chris. And Chris's point of his deck is to draw a lot of cards. And then you got Cell Chain Combo, and then you got Android 13, and they're just like, give me your cards, I'm hungry. I mean, literally, you say assemble, and now all I can think about is Voltron. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Machado. It's We're assembling Voltron. It, I mean, you gotta assemble the pieces. Uh, there's another card, uh, another deck in Magic, for example, in Modern, it's called Tron. You know, because Tron? you assemble all the pieces. Yeah, Tron. Are we going to a video game land? No, it's just called Tron. Huh. And uh, it's just a, a deck that you have to assemble three, uh, three different lands, and then gives you a bunch of energy, Dr. and you can go and, uh, yeah, Doctor Voltron. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you even saw it in Super uh, with the with that universe that was from like uh, the machine. It was universe. it Universe Two? And they made the huge question they, mark? Ma they made that huge like robot that started like destroying everything, which I, I also can't wait because there's so many things from Super that they haven't made into cards, and I'm super excited to see exactly. We'll see what happens in the extra booster that's coming out soon, huh? Yeah. <laughs> when we get all the tournament universal power, tournament, yeah, the tournament be... of power is that. By the way, tournament power pre-sell today at ProPlayGame.com. You can also send us an email, uh, PayPal invoice also. Uh, we can start pre-ordering those boxes at $65 a piece. Um, pre-orders, as you guys know, you want to take advantage of them because then you see something like this Cross Worlds all sold out, $85 all over the board. Uh, definitely something that you don't want to wait on. These these games get really hyped towards release, and we saw the power of that here at ProPlayGame. We are out.
of booster boxes, which Jeez. is crazy because we ordered almost a thousand of them. But a lot but, of special editions. Yes, very special. Uh, people have been making do with the replacement, which is special editions for now, which is uh, why we're so glad that we do still have those in stock as well as starter decks. But so Carlos being able to bring out the crit 17 once again on turn two, mm. while Man, we have crit trunks on Chris's side of the board. So both players are like, well, I need to not let my opponent have cards in his hand, so I'm going to crit, 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 crit. Having great cards is just so powerful. Not giving your opponent those extra cards, especially when they want those extra cards or they want to get closer to awakening. By cutting them off of having those cards in their hand, it could just mean a disaster for them. Especially, I mean, it may seem like only one or two cards, but it's that you you need every single card in these games. You see them come down to the nitty gritty and they got to have those cards to block or to combo. If it's a super combo that you hit off the crit, man. Oh, another crit trunks. Second one. Another second crit, crit trunks. And another one. He's playing it. He's waiting for a response here. <laughs> Carlos, not sure if he can have a response. Neither player is playing blue cards, yeah. so no sense of being in this sliding game. Looks like he told Chris to hold on. Let me see. I mean, let me think about this. Not sure if this has something that he can do with. Let me check here. Crit Trunk swinging in. The card is just really good. He goes ahead and Crit Trunk takes out Crit 17. I don't know why I keep saying Crit, but Crit. Critical. Crit, Crit, Crit. Crit, Crit, Crit. crit. So, like, that's honestly one of the scariest mechanics this game to me. No, yeah, of course. Both players at six life now. Moving in, passing turn over to, to Carlos. Carlos is going to go ahead and charge an energy. Do we see the Silva's turn? Do we? Maybe. Who knows? Find out on this episode of Dragon Ball Z. No, just, just me, Machado. All right, cool. Nailed it. What were you saying? I don't know. <laughs> Are you being scotchy again? Listen, we're only ever happy when we're scotchy. <laughs> <laughs> so we got another critical android coming down here. It looks like that may, might be foil, actually. It's 18 foil. And here comes the pop again. Yep. And the pop from 14. That card's giving Carlos so much value. It is insane. But Ooh. we see a double shot of Vegeta here, which is one of those free combo cards that come out and just defend yourself. For it's the not next really turn. free. It's, it's, uh, it's a pay one, but... Essentially free. Essentially free. We're gonna it's see a free an attack summon. draw, and Carlos is at six. So I don't no, He's not gonna be able to take down any of those creatures, but he is gonna attack them because he doesn't want to give Chris a life here. He wants to keep Chris at six or at five, and just like hit him with Chris. You know, you don't want to go. That was an excellent play by Carlos. Like he was swinging ten to ten. You know, he would have been swinging his leader at ten to Car uh, Chris's leader at ten. Why would you give him a card? You know, you just want to be able to attack with the crit uh, androids, and then the androids are going to take those last two life, give Chris those two, like, less cards, and then from there, you're just like, okay, now I can start attacking you with whatever else I want. And then that's just an excellent line of play by Carlos, and that's exactly how you want to do it. So he just chose an attack on a battle card instead. Just draw a card. You know, you don't want to give, you don't want to pass up the opportunity to draw that card. And he's going to swing in. He needs to take out that 18. Yes. The less crit on the board, the better. And he has to take out that 18. As long as he can keep cards off of his opponent's board, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. Because in this game, definitely hand advantage is a thing. But board presence is what win games. Of course. Especially at a time like this where your opponent's still unawakened. You don't want to give them that. And look. We it's were Haru Haru. We were talking about the Haru Haru. It untaps all your energy. Or four energy, I believe. So it's enough to cover its co casting cost and more. And then you're going to see a cap. A Kaba and another Haru Haru. The Haru is going to bring back more. So, fantastic card. It's going to be able to untap that energy. And a Fearless Pan on top of that. He just played four creatures in one turn. That hurts. <laughs> you guys didn't just see I'm the evil look. You I'm didn't just see the evil look Machado just gave. He's like, can I help you? Can I help you, Scotch? Really? <laughs> so, this is going to be a big turn from Chris. He's got to do some damage here. Uh, but... Question is here, does he want to awaken his opponent? Honestly, I, believe, I, I guess at this point you do, considering how pretty much everything on your board has crit. <laughs> so you're just swinging in, and your opponent's either going to stop it, or they're going to have to lose a card advantage. So it's better, I think, in this position to try and push your opponent. Yes, they're going to awaken. Yes, they're going to have big cards on the board. However, you got a lot of cards to swing in for, and there's no sense of being in, in, in Carlos's deck. So it's, it really, it's like a catch-22. Really, you're just going to, instead of them adding a card to the hand because of critical, it's going to the drop area, so they're not going to get that added bonus. At best, they're getting two cards from the Awaken. So you're going to take potentially three to four cards from them. 
and then turn around and they get two back. Haru Haru, a great card, especially against green and yellow leaders, which is the only deck that you really sat it in against because that's the only way it's getting that ability to unrest that energy and give you that added value because it is a critical attacker and it looks like Chris should take this opportunity to take away more cards from his opponent but he does need to clear away that Android 18. So I would probably direct my attacks at the Android 18 first, make sure that that dies. Once that dies, then I can focus on Carlos's life. But it looks like he might be taking the line to, uh, yeah, attack the, the line life first. Carlos going down five. He has to, He I think he has to just attack the Android 18 first. Not only does that keep Carlos off of a 10K because he's at five life, but he could actually plan out his turn a little bit better once he knows that that android's off the field. Once that android's off the field, he can go sleep a little bit more happy. He'd be like, oh, okay, cool. Okay, now and I also can protect it. Also protects it from not being 20k because true. he won't be at four life. You're true. It looks like he's attacking with trunks. Is he attacking at life or is he attacking at 18? He's attacking at life. Life. Wow. So he lets him go down to four, mm -hmm. which means everything's going to be live. Mistakes were made. Ladies oh, so he's the Scotchies of them? <laughs> Mistakes were made. Is that? Had is a good run. Anything? Yeah, it's a thing. Oh, okay. Well, I didn't do it on purpose. You know, it's just a thing. It's okay. <laughs> this is uh, video proof of you saying a scotchism, by the way. Uh, just saying. <laughs> he's going to take a grave. He's going to make a little clip out of it. He's going to be like, ah, oh, Superstar Weekend. You right. You caught me. See, I don't know, man. This play. Taking him down to three. This down. line was just not. How many cards best. in hand currently for Carlos, though? Because it doesn't look like he has a lot. And now, now he's going Kaba at. Android 18. Well, he doesn't want to give his opponent two extra cards because that'd be four cards. Oh, yeah, awaken. no, of course. But like, he could have thrown like the chain attack trunks at the at the and at the Android 18, and it would have been fine. Going down to five life for Chris. Yeah, because he did use that combo activation, and we. That's a one drop pen. Fearless pen. Which, if you combo with it from battle area, you draw. Hard. Chris has played five creatures this turn. <laughs> And yep, that is it. So he's gonna go ahead and scoop. It looks like we're going into game three. All right. I mean, Chris won the game, sure, but I don't think he took the best line of play at that high risk, like, high reward. It's a very, I mean, like, it's not even about the risk. It, it was just like there was no risk in doing the right play. He just wanted to do the right play because. You just want to play around certain things. You just want to put your opponent around 10k. You want to make sure that their android isn't bigger. Like, if you're going to take the line of attacking the android, you want to do that first. Once you do that, then you have a bunch of critical dudes, and then you're like, attack, 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 critical, critical, critical. Then that's what you want to do. Or, second line plays, just don't even care about the android 18. You're going for game. So, let's just But again, face. like, literally, he had four cards in hand, and his opponent has, like, a billion attacks with critical on the board. Yeah. So, even if you get the two, you go up to six, you can't stop at all. Yeah. You can stop some of it yeah but that's a lot of crit damage coming in and he's just like swing 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 you know the harder harder is for free so it's like and a good thing to know that uh carlos was not playing or is playing in any of his 65 cards main deck side deck I'm he's not playing any sensor beans or no blue. no blue no blue so i mean obviously chris doesn't know that like he can be siding blue cards we saw that in you know in one we saw Eddie, Eddie going into just mono blue and then round two we saw uh, the Mew deck play blue Not cards in the sideboard. Mew. Yeah, you were playing, he was playing all his blue cards in the sideboard. So, like, it was a mono green, red deck, and they went into blue, which is not, like, the most terrible thing. Like, it's not something that you could be like, oh, yeah, no, Carl's never going to do that. There's blue no is like, one of the it's most... It's something that he can definitely do. Like, it's very easy. You know, blue? Jaco's and then Sensu Beats Who? in the sideboard. Jaco. Who? Jaco. Who? Jaco. 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 Jack Jaco. So it's something that he could definitely do. It's something that's yeah. not un unrealistic. Um, but whatever. He just put it on. Didn't have so it. So we're going to go ahead and move on into game three of round three of round of seven. Of seven. <laughs> of seven. Yes. Uh, pretty long day here. And we're going to finally go into round, uh, I mean, game three. And it's going to be Carlos versus Chris. And it looks like Carlos will decide to go first. I would go first. I mean, like, you just want to be able to play those crit androids before your opponent plays their crit cards. But then you got to remember, Chris wants Kaba. So, yeah, I'll go first, but that Kaba will probably come in. I mean, I don't know. That game kind of blew my mind with how many cards he was able to throw out there like that. 
So game three. Yep. Game three. Game three. It looks like Carlos does off to go first, and he started off with it looks like an Android, a Doctor Ruro. That's the great thing about this deck. Like getting that one drop was so insane. He's and hit that Ruro every in. single time. He did side in the made to destroy Android nineteen. You see it right there off the search, just showing it to Chris. Hey, I got this card. Chris instantly reads it and he knows what's up. So it might not be as effective now. And you actually see an Android fifteen in Carlos's here to say hi. Energy. Here to say hi. He's just saying hi. <laughs> but I don't know. I, I'm not, I don't know if I'm a fan of that play, honestly, because that's something that you need in your drop area yep. in order to assemble uh, your ultimate beast. Either and it was the only option he had to charge, or he has a second one. It's very hard to believe that it was his only option. So maybe, yeah, that would go with the letter. He has a second one. A cell, definitely the Shiny. easiest energy that you can choose to play. Yep. It dead to you for right now. And what's interesting is that we haven't seen a cell chain in any of these games. Oh wow, that was huge. 14. That for, that Android 19 just went in. It was able to kill that pan immediately off the board and, and then reduce that, that free draw. Yeah, that takes away a card from Chris. That was just a free card that he lost. Uh, potentially two cards because the card he could have drawn and that pan. Uh, Especially if he had Vegeta, but I think he zapped out, didn't he? Yep. So, I mean, early game, it's so important. It's so important. But then again, He's just like, hey, don't forget, I run the cell chain, so don't keep too many cards in hand. Yep. But I feel like, see, that's, that's just, it's so and then you don't keep too many. Yeah, exactly. You, too, you don't keep too many cards in hand, and then Android 13 comes in and just houses you. But then if you don't have enough cards in hand, you're not going to be able to stop it. So it's like, it's super counterproductive, but you have to play that way. You just have to, because you're going to take a huge hit if that cell comes out while that 13 is on the board. So it looks speaking like of, Carlos finally the on devil. the Android. Yep, finally on the uh, on the cell chain, and we're gonna see what that brings to Chris. Chris is gonna have to go down to three if Carlos does have that final piece, which I would assume he does. Right? It's gonna give Chris an extra card, or attempt to give Chris an extra card here. Does Chris take that? Chris Chris going down to six. And is Chris going to? He's definitely not going to take this attack. I mean, like, what is... Question is, well, I feel like you kind of are just going to dump the cards in your hand anyway. Most because likely. you're going to lose them. So you might as well dump them here. Really depends on how many cards Chris has in hand. If he has, like, f if he has like six and he has to pitch, like, three to stop this attack, then I would do it. If he has anything more than six, then... Yep, there you go. So he had six cards in hand. He dumped, dumped three. Which is the right play to do here. And here comes Big Boy. Of course, that's easily telegraphed. And then Chris has three cards in hand. So I don't think he has to discard any. Or he might have four, actually. That might be he a waste, four. in my opinion. He did have four. So. Well, you lose one. And it looks like it was a Jiren. Yep. That's a card. It's a very important card. He only owns two of them, though. So it's one less Jiren in his deck. However, if he can fire off that insane combo it did last turn, or last game. Now, Carlos opting to sell here, even though he was only hitting one card, he essentially hit four cards because he made his opponent discard them on the attack from the stage two sell. But it's also still a 30k double striking body. You know, that's something that you do want to have your opponent try to deal with on turn three, especially if they're trying to do like hit combos and, you know, you're putting too much pressure on them, you're not going to be able to. So it's something that is not the worst. It's just like the sell doing sell things. With other androids so like man it's it's so hard to deal with cell it has it really so much is. of a larger support system which is why you see it being a lot more impactful chris is going to go ahead and take those hits so that he can try and replenish the hand that he just lost hoping that he can survive long enough now that cell on the board i don't really see anything in his deck that can kill that i mean he had the jiren had Jiren doesn't and have he had now. he had off the Jiren so Jiren would have been most likely not an out because all Carlos has to do is throw a five to stop the Jiren so it's not the best there's just not much he can do man it's rough it's really really rough like I hate seeing things like this chain attack going into Haru Haru so we're getting more crits on the board again 
You and your Haru Haru, you love Haru Haru. Haru Haru. Haru Haru. Haru. Very good, very good card. You weeping out on me? Haru Haru. <laughs> it is a free critical attacker. The other one being a... F I think it's free blocker. Haru Haru clearly being the better choice, though. Yes. Especially in this matchup. I think the other one comes out for free versus the other two colors. Yeah. I mean, it's a very, very solid card in itself, and it's a great cyborg card. Steph, I think it... But the other one has blocker, right? This one has critical. Okay, so this one's the attacker. Then there's a blocker Majin, which would probably be better against Mecha. Shun Shun. Shun Shun. Shun Shun is a blocker. Yep, it's a blocker. And... Oh, the leader card's red or blue against plus 15,000. So it's a 30k blocker. <laughs> that's pretty annoying. That's, that's a little aggravating, if I do say so myself. I'm not sure if it's very effective against that Mecha deck, but... Oh, no. It won't because Mecha is yellow. I'm stupid. That is, in fact, a true statement. It is yellow. <laughs> but Chris coming in here, trying to get away with as many crits as possible. And it looks like he's going to combo off the pan. He learned his lesson last time. That Android can go and kill that pan for free. And Carlos do definitely doesn't have it in there. So it looks like he's going to take a crit. And Carlos is going to go down to four. Which is... Awakening is, territory. Uh, yes, awakening territory. Well, he and can awaken at six, but he's awakening for, for boosts now. And that's Android steroid territory, too. So you're going to see every Android come down from Carlos at 20k. So Machado, would you say it's an Android? Get it, Roid? True. Laugh at my jokes. Hilarious. Tell me ha, funny. Ha, ha. Thanks ha. for your pity laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure the viewers laughed. Nobody laughed. <laughs> Nobody left. <laughs> Maybe next time. Maybe next time. I laughed at my own joke. Well, there's the second Jiren. He's using it to combo, actually. So he's using chain attack to swing into the trunks. He's going to need more than that, though. And just a oh, simple five. Just a simple no. five. That's just so devastating on Chris's part. Like, you dedicate an attack and a Jiren, which is an out to the cell, to try out the cell. And then all your opponent has to do is throw a five, and you're just like, ugh. It's just the worst feeling. Sometimes you have to do it, though. I don't know if Chris had to do it, though. Do it there, though. You, you uh, kind of want to head up into that thing, because if that thing stays on the board, you're, you're dead. Chris does have a topo in hand, and I do want to see that go in, come in play. That's a god of destruction, by the way. <laughs> I can't wait for in fact. I can't god. wait for that card to come out, uh, like the god of god, destruction. God version of him? Yeah. Oof. That's going to be huge. That's, that's going to be a beautiful SPR. For sure. Damn. Carlos untapping with a cell for the second time. That can't be fun. Untapping with cell is just... Especially twice in a row. Like, Chris has to dedicate so many cards. That's an average of three to match, four to beat on 5Ks. And providing your opponent doesn't combo, <laughs> you look at six to seven. Oh, a topo coming down. There's your boy. So Topo having one of the few abilities to play on your opponent's turn. And Topo, one of the better ones, sitting at an uncommon, or common, I believe. Uh, so we're going to go and pull it up here. It looks like it has a counterattack. Play this card, negate the attack. So attack is completely negated. And if you or your opponent's leader card has 1,500 or more power, reduce the energy cost of this card by 2. So that's a 2 energy negate with an auto when this card KOs your opponent's battle card switch it to active mode so that's going to be pretty pretty useful in getting rid of multiple threats on Carlos's board so for sure swing everything into this topo yes <laughs> like swing everything into the cell which is that an untap cell or a tap cell I can't tell from the way that it's sitting there so it is tap yeah. so he's gonna oof, swing into the cell dump your hand into it untap topo swing again you could possibly take that line of play. Carlos is at four, and that Topo only has single strike, but it looks like you're going to see another chain attack trunks here, which is going to play a hit. And it looks like Chris opted to keep a hit combo in there. It's good. It's good. What are the chances of that going off? Uh, I'd say about 3.666 repeating, of course. <laughs> <laughs> very accurate. We'll take it to the uh, stat team. Let's. Uh, let's... It, it looks like you're wrong. Though. It was a Leroy Jenkins quote, by the way. Just, just thought right. I'd let you know, because clearly it went... Straight over your head. Clearly, Whatever. Clearly. Clearly. So we're going to see what Chris has here. He's untapping. He's One playing down to his three. chain attack trunks. And Carlos is going down to three here. 
one more life will put him in range of that lightning fast hit let's see if carlos is going to be resisting this attack or he's just going to go to two and be like okay it doesn't matter if you have hit because you're dead next turn honestly i feel like you need to swing into that cell with your tobo you need to because it's 20k swinging in um oh man if he had the other pan if he had the sr pan give everything double strike 5k oof oof it's a good card well i think chris is does chris tap out uh he's got one adapt okay so he has one readied up energy if he swings with topo how many cards do you have at hand three two he's uh he doesn't have enough he would have to throw a 10k but then he'd be tapped out so uh i don't know like i feel like <sighs> it's a tough spot here for chris honestly it's not not an easy thing to be staring down another cell especially with only one energy up maybe if he had two energy up and another topo that would be fantastic but you have a serious choice to make here do you want to try and push your opponent because they're at three and you've got four attacks or three attacks on the board yep. and he does takes, me down to two. takes it down to two and that was a snap keep and we're in hit territory boys so Ooh. it might actually be a thing can we get this on stream please please just one time guys. clocks one time I think it's definitely going to be one of those things, though, because this is where you have to make the snap decision. This is where you have to make that snap decision, and he goes ahead and passes and does activate <sighs> hits ability, pitching a card to make it indestructible. Untapping with cell for the fourth turn? Third? Fourth? Somewhere in that ball. It's been on the board too long. Jeez, that is the answer. It's man. been on there too long. Um, so let's see if Carlos can close out the game here, and he's going to need to if he's gonna if he plans on staying at two energy, uh, at two life, especially with Chris having a few cards in hand and possibly a hit. I mean, if he discards oh, for hit, to, he, he has, has to have the hit. Like he there's has no to way, have it unless he's like just great buffer and he just wants to like troll his opponent. Better than me poker, clearly. <laughs> like he needs to have, but the question is going to be, can he survive? can he survive this turn? Yep. Now, Chris is at three here, so he can afford to take that cell hit, which we are snap taking. Hopefully, our opponent calms a little bit into the cell and just doesn't know, you know, any better. Paying three. Ooh, oh, don't do it. Not like this. Not oh. like this, please. How many cards in Chris's hand? Oh, I think it's three or four. There's not, en not enough is the answer. Not enough is the answer. Snap. He has no way of defending, uh, unless he has like two 10Ks. He has to have two 10Ks. Well, he needs a negate. He needs a singular negate. He needs a- Oh, the unending awakening, I think it's called. The new red sensu bean slash negate, right? Is that, is that now? I believe that's what it's right. called. The unending awakening. Negate the attack, Miss then choose one of your red Saiyan leader cards against plus 5,000 for the duration of the turn. And is he playing that card? Yes. He is, he's playing two. He has uh -oh. two on his sideboard, and he has two on his main board. Uh-oh. Does he have this it? This could be it. Does he have it? If he has it, he is a god. If he doesn't have it, this could potentially be the end. You snap take two, go okay. down to one, okay. and pray. You just pray at this point. How many untapped energy for has it. Per, uh, Carlos? Go ahead and pitch. Carlos two untapped has energy. Two untapped energy. Carlos has w two untapped energy for Carlos. Chris has one untapped energy. So an unending awakening here will do it. There it is. Oh, he had it. He had it. Swinging uh, it for one. He needs a five. Or Carlos not to combo. Carlos is comboing. Five. Oh, ten. that's ten. Thirty. Oh, no. Oh. We didn't have it. So close. We so were all close. Right there. Oh my God, man! Carlos if, stealing the game. If Chris had another like two cards, but oh, that was just so devastating. Oh that. man! Just, oh, that was that was that was down I to the line. I can't take games like down that, Machado. Down to the line, down to the wire. Fantastic game. All he needed was a few more cards to just defend that attack, and then just come out with a lightning fast hit and just end the game that way. So he was he 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 was trying. Of course. But then Android 17 being able to come out for two for game. He just he had the 10K, he had the extra 5K, put himself up to 30. It's just, well, 35. Yep. He's already 20. Go up to 5, or up to 10 and up to 5. So he's 35K, and he only had 10K in, in the hand to combo with. He actually didn't have the, the hit. It was unfortunate that he didn't have any 10Ks also, because he could have had the, the sense of being the gate, which is one card, and then a 10K. 
uh, possibly you could have had and then like you know maybe the lightning fest hit but yeah the sell at the end was just something that devastated him because like it's another 30k you have it forces you in a gate like he had the one to gave for the sell that was on board but he left the sell on there for four turns that that sell took what was his card count like Two seven eight. or eight cards yeah. like uh, who double sells you okay let's let's just say that cell should have died that cell should have been killed with a topo immediately and that's what we were saying like you need to kill it and if you kill it you have an extra attack yes but that's also a combo card later on so him not trying to kill that cell leaving that that original uh sev drop cell on the board for too many turns is honestly what probably lost him that game Most likely. because if he had handled it earlier he wouldn't have to worry about it and he would just been able to deal with the one cell coming out but and because you saw of him two you saw him trying to dedicate like some resources and trying to kill it once but then once he found out like hey this might be a little bit less like like realistic than i thought then he was just like oh forget about it let me go and that's where he like he switched up his game plan and i feel like if he didn't switch up his game plan that he would have been able to have maybe more direct shot at actually killing his opponent or just dedicating a little bit more at trying to kill the, the cell like there was two different lines that felt like he was like stuck in the middle of them and then that ultimately lost him the game uh and then pitching the card for i mean hit it's just you have you lose cards inherently with that deck and he had a cool thing going but Cell, I think, definitely has to be like his hardest matchup, and it's—I mean, barring the the mecha the mecha combo deck, but let alone the fact that you know you're not dealing with one hand destruction deck, you're dealing with two hand destruction engines in one yeah. deck. So it's like <laughs> two thirty. If you don't have one, seconds. you have the other, and you just what do you do? What do you do? Because he's gonna start eating cards eventually. He's gonna be popping cards left and right. So it's just you have to be able to swarm the board with a certain amount of cards and keep your hand to a point where that's not gonna be that detrimental. But then if you keep your hand to where it's not gonna be detrimental, you get sell. And you're like, well, I had a hand, now I don't have a hand. Now I don't have it. So really interesting deck, uh, really interesting deck from Carlos, Mono Green Android. I think it's something that we can like look forward to in the future. Absolutely. Definitely something that's very powerful. And uh, the pan deck, I feel like it's something strong too. It, it had its moments when we were like, Whoa. you just do that in one turn? Maybe exactly in one turn. but guys uh, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna wrap here we will see you in round four appreciate every single guys that are out here i know they do i do i love your faces fantastic we'll job uh still over, almost 100 viewers i know uh, dusty's going on with his great event over there we're gonna show some love on him as well but um fantastic job thank you guys again for watching we're gonna try to get one of the pvd guys on uh next round start showing maybe that micro freezer deck i think i think it's time what do you guys think? <sighs> I think we can wait another round, but whatever. Your let, us, let us know in the comments <laughs> below, guys. You guys are in control of the stream. Thank you guys again for watching, and we'll see you after these short commercial breaks. Philippe Roger here, co-owner of Pro Play Games. Here at PPG, we're constantly doing stuff to try to bring you more content and bring you more DBS deck techs and more coverage for you. And we're happy to announce our affiliation with dbsdecks.com. DBS Decks, the guys over there, Mark specifically, are working very hard to compile a list of all the top decks from all of the events across the nation. And there, you can see even cards played on a percentage base within the archetype. So it's a great, great website. We encourage you to go and use that. Uh, so go ahead and check it out, dbs-dex.com, and check out Pro Play Games for all your DBS needs. Stay pro.